In 1940, the man who would pick up and develop Gilly's work was his cousin, Archibald Mackindo. Mackindo was a charismatic and brilliant surgeon who attributed his success to the presence of God coming down his right arm. Mackindo faced huge challenges. Allied bomber crews were coming back from sorties with aviation fuel burns that had rarely been seen before. Nineteen-year-old Bill Foxley was one such victim. I was uh, the, the navigator in a Wellington bomber, and on March the 16th, 1944, at 11:20 uh, at night, we were taking off, and uh, something went wrong with the equipment, and we we dived straight into the ground from about 300 feet, and uh, naturally burst into flames, and. Uh, I got myself out through the Astrodome on the aircraft and I heard my uh, wireless operator uh, calling for help and I, I climbed back in and helped to get him out. And that's, of course, where a lot of the problems with my hands came. They were badly burned getting out, getting all the hot metal. But um, you just do these things without any thought. If you stayed to think about it, you probably wouldn't do it. Burning aviation fuel was utterly merciless. It vaporised Bill's skin, causing damage that could only be repaired by a waltzing tube pedicle. And after three weeks, they detached one end and put it up onto your shoulder so that you had the tube there hanging like a trunk. And then after another three weeks, um, it was detached from the shoulder and put on the side of the face, still forming the trunk. And then another three weeks was the final operation when the nose was formed, and in my case, the upper lip. And I say that was over a period of um, three, six, nine weeks. I remember when I had mine from my nose to my shoulder, going outside the Canadian wing, which I was in at the time, playing football, or can you imagine it? <laughs> playing football, you couldn't pull your head that way at all. And um, as I say, we, we did all sorts of mad things. Mackinder's real genius was his recognition of the importance of psychology in reconstructive surgery. Archie Mackinder was a great psychologist, as well as being a great surgeon, and he made sure that the first thing we did was to get out and about and in the public eye and where better to go than into the local pubs and in fact we used to go to London with these tubes on frighten the life out of people but uh, that was all part of the game. After the First World War Gillies patients had struggled to find a place in Civvy Street. Tortured by their looks Many took dead-end jobs working alone. Suicides were not uncommon. Mackindo, though, had other ideas. We are Mackindo's army. We are his guinea pigs. With dermatomes and pedicles, glass eyes, false teeth and wigs. And Bill Foxley and his fellow veterans wear their scars with pride. Collectively known as the Guinea Pig Club, their mentors approach the surgery not only healed their injuries, but also their minds. And something else had been healed. Plastic surgery, in 1914 a tarnished and disreputable business, had been transformed into the work of heroes. <laughs> 